To say that this is a popular fantasy book is not an exaggeration. This book has more than 110,000 ratings on Goodreads and has a very, very impressive average rating at 4.23 at the time of recording this video. Just to put that into perspective, currently on Goodreads, Anthony Ryan, Brian Stavely, Adrian Jakowski, Jay Kristoff, Mark Lawrence, Fonda Lee and Olivia Blake have never had a book reach 110,000 ratings on Goodreads. Consequently, this book has the same amount of ratings as Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and everyone knows that Brandon Sanderson is probably the most popular fantasy author right now. If you're involved in Bookstagram or Booktube, then you will have seen this book before. Most people become absolutely captivated by this incredible cover art by Ivan Belokov and I totally get why. The orange colors really pop, the dragon is really really beautiful and more importantly there is so much intrigue on this cover. I mean just look at it. When you go into the bookshop and you see this cover you will be automatically drawn to it. But you can't really say that people only love this book because of the cover art because having an average rating of 4.23 on Goodreads is definitely a very impressive average rating. So having read this book, do I understand the hype and love for it? Well, the short answer is no and the long answer is kinda. Let me explain. So this video will be split into four parts. What I loved, what I didn't love, who should pick up this book, and lastly, will I read the prequel book? So let's start with what I loved. The Prior of the Orange Tree is a fantasy standalone which is incredibly rare to come by in the fantasy genre. This is a thick book at around 800 pages, but you have a self-contained story. Yes, there is a prequel book coming now, but this was written originally as a standalone and I think a lot of people really do appreciate that. But the real highlight of this book is the world building. The world building is truly some of the best I have ever read, especially considering that this is only one book. This story is set in a world that is divided by the west and the east. So in this world, one side of this world basically believes that dragons are basically from the devil, he's called the nameless ones, so that side of the world hates dragon. While the other side of the world, they draw a distinction between fire breathing dragons and wind and water dragons. That side of the world believes that wind and water dragons are worthy of worship. But in common, both the east and the west side of this world believe that the nameless one is a real threat to this world. And it's prophesied that the nameless one will one day return after being bound for a thousand years. And it just so happens that this story takes place at very close to these thousand years having run its course. So we're dropped into a world that is getting closer and closer to an impending doom and you have two sides of this world that believe that this is going to happen but they just can't seem to get along. One side hates dragons while the other side worships dragons. This is definitely an absolutely fascinating concept and I was really impressed by how real the world felt. What I loved about the world building is how Shannon does such an amazing job at showing how the world has changed over the course of a thousand years. We get insight into the story and why things are the way they are and it felt very realistic to me. Also, there are a lot of different kingdoms and people fighting for power. This world has magic and forbidden magic, artifacts, dragons, pirates and so on and so on. The world building is incredibly intricate and very impressive. However, I must say that the first 150 pages of this book are quite overwhelming. The writing style is very different and the amount of names and locations that are thrown at you can be very, very overwhelming. Fortunately, there is a character list at the back of this book, so I would just recommend using that if you do pick up this book. But be prepared to be quite overwhelmed initially. Now, as you can hear, I totally understand why people love this book. There are so many fantastic things about it, but I am still surprised by how many people actually love it. Let's talk about what I didn't love. Having read this book, I definitely thought that the market for this type of book would have been much, much smaller and I'm finding it incredibly hard to recommend this book. And here I need to cover two different areas, plot structure and characters. Firstly, while this is a fantasy standalone that covers a lot of ground, this book felt very slow paced. I mean, it's actually crazy to say this, but it felt like the first 720 pages are pure build-up. And then we reach the climax which lasts around 50 pages and then we have 20 pages of wrap-up. 
this story is basically 90% build up. Now, if you enjoy a book that very slowly increases the tension and slowly adds more and more complexity, then this book will be for you. We start this book by hearing about this impending doom, and then we follow these characters as they're trying to prepare for this doom that is about to happen. But I remember when I came to page around 700 out of 800, and I was just thinking, how in the world is Shannon going to wrap up this story? I was still waiting for the climax at that point, and then we came to the climax, and then it was just over. In a lot of ways, it just felt like this story was too short, and I know that that is insane to say about an 800 page book, but you can't have this much build up and then just resolve the conflict that fast. That being said, I was very impressed and surprised by some of the choices Shannon made in the final act. Shannon actually puts a spin on what most readers would expect from a typical fantasy novel, and I do have a great respect for that. Also, I need to briefly talk about the characters. Now, I can't say that the characters are badly written, because that would be a lie. The characters are very complex and multi-layered, and we get to follow different characters that either live on the east side or west side of this world, which allows us, the readers, to get insight into why there is so much bitterness between these two kingdoms. But Unfortunately, I didn't find that I cared for all the POEs. I don't really know why, but I just didn't care that much about the characters in this world. Which is very unfortunate, because I am a very character-driven reader. The thing that kept me turning the pages was that I really wanted to know how the story would conclude. The plot is so, so interesting, and there is so much tension and build-up, but having finished this book, I just feel a bit deflated. So the important question is, who should pick up this book? Well, before I answer that question, I just want to say a special thanks to my patrons. I really do appreciate the support. So, who should read this book? Well, if you are in the mood for a fantasy standalone that has incredible world building, great politics, and you enjoy a slow burn story with a compelling plot, then this book will be for you. I totally get why people love this book, but I also totally get why people wouldn't love this book. And at the end of the day, I'm finding it very hard to recommend this book, especially to readers who mainly read modern fantasy. I gave this book 3.5 stars, and as I said, I don't regret reading this book at all. So, will I read A Day of the Fallen Night, the prequel story that is coming out in February 2023? And the answer to that is yes. I was very fortunate to receive an arc of A Day of the Fallen Night, which is actually the reason why I finally decided to pick up the Priory of the Orange Tree. As mentioned, I really love the world Shannon has crafted, and I'm very intrigued to see what other stories are in this world. So I'll definitely give this book a read. So everyone, look out for a review coming for this book sometimes before February 2023. So that is it. Have you read the Priory of the Orange Tree? Is this book on your TBR? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next video.